What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. This one's a bit more of a how-to. So, like I shared in my previous video, I wanted to cover off how I've managed to install my own hand pull um, at home for my homebrew. Now, this isn't for your um, highly carbonated ke keg beers. It's for more cask beer, very low carbonated, if any at all. So, I'm going to be putting that beer there, which is my Beach Life Bitter, that's going to be going into a bag. That bag then is going into a box, kindly provided to me by my local craft beer and cider bar. Thanks, Butterfly Collector. And um, I'll go through all the fittings and stuff to watch out for and how I did it basically and all the links to the bits will be in the description below so uh, let's get transferring so first off is the bag these are from um, Vigo Limited and these are 20 litre bags. They are pre-sanitised and they come with that just, just ready to pull out and fill the beer. This is obviously the uh, safety cap. So I'm going to lay this on the floor and then we're going to wrap the beer into it and try to keep air to a minimum. but. I'll show you a method that I go through to, to eliminate most of that anyway. And Vigo Limited, they also sell the boxes to go with these, which are basically the same things, but really you could either use a, any cardboard box, any, any plastic box that you've got, which I'm going to be changing out to once I find a plastic bin, that site type of volume and, and shape then i'll be using that instead so yeah let's transfer this now and get going on it so this is a uh, my pre-sanitized uh, transfer hose pop this in the bag get in the bag one side in there onto here and then rip and off we go. Lovely colour on it, hopefully you can see it from there. Very light bitter. Try not to splash it as I'm uh, filling up the bag initially. doesn't look like it's filling up but you can tell by the movement of the bubbles which you've got to try and keep to a minimum now there's still a beer flowing in there just try and chase the bubbles towards this side it's like the dream water bed isn't it just need a straw. Is it still going or what? There we are. Right. We're at the end of the transfer. Just kill that. That's mainly going to be CO2 coming through there from the top of the fermenter. So gently prise this out. Just get rid of this for a sec. Get hold of our tap and place it in there gently bring the bring the beer to the surface and get rid of some bubbles first if i can bring the beer up to the surface and 
then pop this on. And it goes down three stages, so you've got to make sure it's clipped right in. Which is easier said than done. Just fold that over like that, get some more purchase on it. Whoosh, and she's in. Right, now to get it into a box. Ah, man. So this bit, you've got to be a little bit ballsy, I suppose, with the way you pick this up. you just got to grab the ball by the horns and hope it doesn't break. It's 20 litres of beer. So, like I said about some small air bubbles that were lying along the top, um, don't be too concerned about them. Try and keep them to a minimum. Try and keep them to the minimum um, to avoid oxidization. But what I'll do now, I'll just show you the rest of the kit and then hooking this up to get rid of said bubbles. So we'll start off with the fridge. You need a little bit of space for it to uh, to store 20 litres of beer, but not as much as a keg, which is winner winner. This is one I prepared earlier, just with star sand in it to pull through. And this here is what they call a Vitop connector. This is effectively the piece that you're going to want. It comes with a little um, barb on the bottom here, which you can connect some uh, silicone hose, food grade obviously, with a stainless steel jubilee clip. This I think, oh, I'm not sure how much this was, I'll put all the prices below as well. So that then runs to a piece of 3 8 beer line. Just there with another Jubilee clip and it comes up and out of the fridge. And it's worth noting that this fridge is currently running at a very nice 11 degrees controlled by a STC 1000. So moving on to the external side of the fridge, again that's the same 3 8 pipe straight through the side. Then we go to a one-way John Guest check valve. So that obviously stops beer flowing back down into the bag or drawing air through any of the seals up here back in. And obviously a 3 8 John Guest elbow. And that goes up to a 3 8 um, straight connector, which connects it to the Angram pump itself. The view from behind it. Good old GoPros, eh? And that beauty there is what we're left with. You can get three different types of sparklers um, freely available on eBay and Amazon and the like. Um, I'm going to get another two. I think this one is the medium one. Not sure what size holes. One mil, I think. But yeah, I, I don't want to be knocking all the uh, all the life out of my beers. So let's go through connecting this up and drawing it through. Oh, let's get a glass. Let's get a glass. So this is just going to connect onto the bag itself. Very straightforward and foolproof. He says when he can't get it off. Come on. So that goes on, clips over, and locks. Simple as that. Twist. Done. We're on. <laughs> oh my word. 
At least it's on camera. So that is effectively how I set it up. I make sure that the connectors at the top of the box so all the air is going to come up to the top and then get drawn out and then what I'll do I'll lay it on its side and shut this up so that we don't get any so we're not drawing CO2 off the beer all the time just in time thank you let's pull it through see what happens just a few Check that out. So what I'll probably do, I'll leave that box now sat up just for a couple of hours so any trapped air bubbles and what have you will um, come to the surface. I'll keep on pulling off little bits of beer. Obviously I'll have to taste it just in case, make sure it's okay. Um, it'll be chilling down nicely, conditioning at 11 degrees. I'll pop the box on its side so we're no longer pulling any um, CO2 through if there is any residual in the beer and then we can enjoy the uh, cask ale from your homebrew bar and if that doesn't look like a very inviting refreshing pint I don't know what does look at that so I'm not going to be doing a taste test of this beer because it's it's warm it's unconditioned and it's flat as a pancake. So I hope you found that video useful. Got any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. I have also done a quick search on YouTube to see um, what else is out there with regard to this type of system. And I saw one which I've already seen before, which is from Homebrew Chris. I'll link that video down below as well. And um, Robert Baldwin as well. So both of those guys I've seen have got this type of system at home and in the interest of sharing, I'll put their videos in my description. So if there's any more information you might get from theirs, then yeah, by all means, crack on. That's all from me guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share as well. Sharing is caring. Yechida. Oh, I saw some potential.